know, working uh, in construction for a while, you just see how much waste there is, especially in the construction industry, because it's cheaper just to like rent a dumpster and throw a dumpster away than it is to find a place for all this stuff to go. Uh, pallets is just a very obvious extension of that. So I feel like pallet stuff is just something people can identify with. Everybody knows what a pallet is. They've seen one, they've walked by one. They're easy to get your hands on too. So other people, you know, if they're watching my stuff, it's like they can go somewhere and they can get a pallet. I don't know. It's just, if it feels bad to me to see stuff get thrown away and get wasted when it can be utilized in a useful way and live in an art piece for much longer, or a piece of furniture, even if you don't call it art, you know, a functional piece rather than it being thrown away and just rotting in the ground forever. Like epoxy <laughs> and river tables. Looking at you, river tables. My name's Paul Jackman from Jackman Works. Jackman Works on the internet everywhere. Where do you want me to look? Are you? Uh, this camera would be great. Okay. I'm an artist, I guess, uh, before anything else, and located here on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I, I guess on the internet I'm most known for Palawood projects and large creations of, of giant everyday objects, and kind of mostly in the form of woodworking, and that's just kind of where it starts. I'd always liked the idea of making videos and stuff, I'd played around with it a bit as a kid. It was kind of just another art form outside of woodworking, a way to expand the artwork a little bit and do a different genre. Because I was professionally trained as a woodworker, kind of professionally trained, I guess. And not that woodworking is boring to me, but I had a foundation of skills and I wanted to kind of explore that in another area and get another foundation of skills. The real story is my dad was an arborist and he was murdered by a tree. So now I try and cut wood with sharp blades as much as possible to get back at the trees. My dad is alive and well and he's a great person. And I feel bad about joking about his death, but it's still fun even if I feel bad. So I'm in a beach town uh, south of Boston, about an hour south of Boston on Cape Cod. I don't know, it's a kind of relaxed beach town that gets pretty quiet in the winter, which is nice and it's busy in the summer. This is like, you couldn't get a better picture of Cape Cod on a Friday. I grew up here for part of my life, like my middle school, high school life. My dad was in the Coast Guard, so we moved around a lot. My wife joined the Coast Guard, and we moved around again, and ended up back here. This is our most recent station. A couple years ago, we moved back here just kind of by accident. That was good. Always on the water, because the Coast Guard, there's coast that needs to be guarded. It's actually my wife up there, she's flying that play. So she comes home for lunch. It is, it's like a very relaxed New England town. It's old and charming and like, it's not Boston where people are like kind of abrasive, but you still have that vibe here a little bit, but people are a little bit more friendly, but still abrasive too. Like it's kind of a good medium. Cape Cod. I mean, I started woodworking as a teenager. Uh, I started like making skateboard ramps and stuff. My dad had the jigsaw and a, a corded drill. So I made the ramps and the kids would always come and play and probably make an insurance nightmare at my house. But it was fun because I like I liked making the ramps. And it kind of evolved from there. I went to a vocational high school and studied carpentry there. And that's where I was trained. And my teacher there actually owns this barn. So that's how we ended up specifically here at this barn when we were moving back to the Cape. I was stayed in contact with this teacher since, since I left the high school. And, uh, when we were coming back here, we were in touch, and he's like, hey, I got this barn that we should put a wood shop in, and we ended up doing that, as you can see. Hi, I'm the employee of the month, Paul Jackman. Welcome to Jackman Works. This is my lumber yard here. Pallet, pallets left. That's probably like 20 pallets, I think, right there. Fun fact, most of those came from DC and we moved those with us. I had a bunch of pallets saved up and we disassembled them there because I didn't want to put them back at the store. So disassembled them and then laid all the pallet slats on top of a pallet and we moved that pallet with us, the pallet of pallet slats, and that's a bunch of them right there. So this is every single species I've ever gotten from a pallet. So I save a little chunk of every species and then 
It goes on the board, it's got a little magnet on the back. So this is my bathroom. This is my, my water supply. And my dream is a five gallon bucket that I dump outside when I'm done uh, filling it up. And there's a toilet that's not hooked up. There's no water in the building yet. I built from here up in Rhode Island. And this is all built very modular, so it can move around to different shops because we move around a lot. What else? I have my epoxy pups from Total Boat. These are the best things ever, actually. Not sponsored, but, but sponsored, but not sponsored. Remember the unicorn horn on the Netflix show? That's part of the garbage from that that I grabbed so I could do something with it and I'm never gonna do anything with it. It's gonna sit here and collect dust. If you watch the show and you pick up the, uh, the horn, when we start turning it on the lathe, when Pat starts turning it on the lathe, it looks like this. And then when it's done, the lines are going the other way. And the reason for that is we made two blanks, just in case one exploded. Like with the slanted walls, you gotta get kind of clever, finding places to store stuff. I mean, I've, I've always liked reclaiming stuff and using garbage. I, that's a lot of what I do now. We're in an undisclosed location. Uh, otherwise known as my lumber yard. I don't know pallet specifically. I, there was a pallet challenge Sterling Davis put on. He's another YouTube guy, and uh, he would he would just have a pallet uh, contest kind of thing, and you make a YouTube video, you build something out of a pallet, and uh, that was when I was kind of kicking off the YouTube channel. I was like, well, that's that sounds like a good challenge. Let's see what I can do, and found some pallets, and that was my first YouTube video was building a toilet seat cover out of pallets which still exists and it's in Graz's house on his toilet because he lives in my old apartment. That was kind of the, the, the genesis of that, I guess, and then it evolved from there. Kind of gives a warm feeling to the piece of furniture and it's reclaimed and recycled, which is something I always look for. Because like the pallets I was tearing apart, once I started tearing into them, I was like, this is like oak and maple and like there's good stuff here. There's good raw material. And that's kind of been my goal when I got deeper into the pallet project stuff is to see what you can do with the raw material and kind of make pallet stuff that doesn't look like it's made from pallets, I guess. I don't know if I'm successful in that because I know it's made from pallets. So it's hard to judge that as an insider, but as an outsider, I feel like it's not obvious necessarily that it's made from pallets, other than the title of the YouTube video saying pallet wood in it. This is all my memorabilia from other makers. My subscriber plaque, my Jimmy Duresta doll. This is my Jimmy Duresta ice pick. Yeah. So, Jimmy had these dolls made. It was like a limited edition thing, probably only a couple hundred of them. And I had the idea, that's his cat, that's Spike. The Jimmy Duresta ice pick is like his famous thing. So I had the idea of making a Jimmy Duresta ice pick out of Jimmy Duresta. So this is my secret, uh, my weapon, if anybody breaks in here. But now everybody knows about it, so it's not much of a secret anymore. So make itself made this Funko pop of me. Her and uh, Jamie Page collaborated on that idea. My shot glass collection too. These are all my handmade shot glasses from different people. That started with the Carolina shot glass, which is like one of my most popular videos, if not my most popular video. It was a Reddit post on r slash DIY, and that post got, the comments got locked. But because people were freaking out, because it's made out of pallets, so it's a pallet with shot glass. People were like, oh, it's poisonous, there's rat piss in that and stuff. And it was like, it's a wooden shot glass. It's, it's a piece of art, it's not to be used. Like, I feel like that didn't have to be said. They were like, giving me death threats and just crazy stuff. They're like, I'm gonna reach out. Like, does Carolina know this? I'm reaching out to your sponsors. Like, they're well aware of this. I've told them, I've warned them that they'll hear from you and they don't care. And then it kind of became a thing. Dustin Penner made this one out of lead because he said, oh, you want to poison a shot glass? How about a lead shot glass? My pack rat and scavenging stuff comes from Mac probably more than anything. That's his doing. The painted lady that came from uh, his friend's old house that was next door that he inherited and somehow it ended up here and I kept it up there because it's creepy and weird and I find it hilarious. My peanut butter jar collection. People freak out when they see all these jars. They're like, how much peanut butter do you eat? I was like, it's not that much. Accumulated over 10 years, you get a lot of them. Because it's like the perfect storage for your hardware. So this is a French cleat wall just with all of my peanut butter jars. Yeah, so for six years now, I've worked for myself full time. The Duresta knife. 
I was, I guess I was indifferent to my job and my wife decided to join the Coast Guard. So we had to move, I had to quit my job. Took this full time, it was kind of a, an experiment. We moved to Rhode Island, I was like, well, I'm gonna get a shop. I had a YouTube channel that I'd kind of started in the basement. So that's it, the knife came first and then I had to sharpen the blade. So I had to make the screwdriver. I was like, let's see, you know, this YouTube channel's getting some traction. Like, I think this could probably make some money. Like I can sell my products. That's what I did for a while was sell my products and make videos of those products. My agreement in my head and with my wife was like, I'll try this for a year, see if it works. If it does, then I'll keep doing it. And it, I don't know, did it work? To be continued. So I was trying to tell you, this is where I went to high school, but there's a guy cutting some concrete and stopped as soon as we stopped recording. But we're gonna see if we can get inside the school. Legally, of course. Let's see if we can get in trouble. This is the old carpentry shop. I can't believe it's open. Let's go. <laughs> the old carpentry shop. This used to be Mac's desk here, which is why it's like completely empty. This is what we make Adirondack chair pieces on because this is big enough for like the arm of the Adirondack chair so you could swing it around any side. So like I was spoiled working in here. Got the saw stops when I was here. So those are from like 2007 or 8, which is like when saw stops started selling saws. Yeah. We came in one morning, both of these were set off. When we left the day before it was fine. Like the table saws were working and they had been tripped. Both of the saw stops had been tripped. And they did some investigating. They're trying to figure out, like, how did that happen overnight? Eventually figured out, oh, a janitor came in. He was cutting stuff on the table. So I was like, okay, that's fine. He was cutting a sheet of aluminum, which transmits your electric current. So he goes to cut a sheet of aluminum on one of them, trips it. It's like, oh, that's weird. And then he's like, oh, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Goes over to the second one, does the same thing on the second one, and trips that one. So we had to replace the brakes and the blades of both of those. So that lifts all the way up. And then you can see the pulley system. totally not ocean approved. There's a pulley system into here. This is a big column, it's hollow. There's a lead weight in there that counterweights the stair system. So the lead weight drops as you lift, lift up the stairs. The total Mac invention. So he paints all his tools purple because his theory is nobody wants purple tools. So why would you steal a tool that's painted purple? Usually they're more purple than that. But like they're at least tagged, but a lot of them are just, the whole thing is purple. I, I try and make my content lighthearted. Like a lot of it by its nature, like the projects, the Jackman size projects are meant to be funny because they're not, they're not practical. They're not meant to be practical. But I, I hope in people coming across those projects, like they'll see it and they'll click on it when they normally wouldn't. If it's like people that are gonna click on like an eight foot tall giant hammer made of wood are probably different people that are gonna click on like building a kitchen cabinet. But a lot of the concepts within that build are the same. Like there's there's practical applications within building a giant hammer that aren't building a giant hammer. It's the processes within are similar and can be expanded on to other practical projects that you can do around your home or build a piece of furniture. Um, so I feel like the humor kind of brings people in who might not, you know, consume that content normally. Also, it helps me not think about my impending acceleration towards death. So that's good. It's all carved out of basswood. I did everything I could to make it as light as possible. Like the hand, the, the palm of the hand is hollow. I carved out as much as I could so that I could use it with one hand. And I still, it's like just a little too heavy to use one hand. So it's kind of a two handed operation. One hand holds it, one hand operates the fingers. But this was a COVID project. It was kind of a joke about social distancing. And I said, cause it was like, the, the holiday times, and it's like the COVID holidays, like what do you do? It's like, oh, you just stay six feet away from people, and then you have these really convenient hands and you can do whatever you want with them. It's like kind of unsettling. I basically tore that apart, sanded everything down, planed down the slats, any cracks and stuff, I filled with some black tinted epoxy, and then I varnished it, I buffed it, so it's like a mirror finish. The nails, I straightened out, I de-rusted them, cleaned the rust off with the wire wheel, put the nails back in, all in the same holes, put it all back together, and I restored a palette. Because restoration videos are like the biggest thing, so. Why wouldn't that succeed? 
finished. It is a bunch of drawers. So that's a bunch of my lathe and storage and stuff. And I still gotta fill up a lot of this. But you can see the drawers get deeper. Magic. Because this is slanted to mate with the roof line. If, if 69 with the roof, if you will. But that's not all, there's more. The reason this one's on wheels is for this. So you get some extra table space if you ever need it. What excites me about this? It's a good distraction towards my acceleration towards death. Uh, question again? <laughs> <laughs> so this is shop number two. This is the, I call it the millennial shop. This is like nobody over 40 is allowed in here because there's computers and stuff in here. But it's kind of like the technology shop. So if I need to do anything CNC or laser, this is, this is the place. Shipping, packaging, and fulfillment all happens in here too. So these are all my Adirondack chair templates and my merch and all that stuff. What do I do now? I don't know, cause like there's there's all the like happy feely stuff of like if you want to do it, just do it, and like you'll find a way if 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 it's your passion and and that's what you want to do, just do it, and it'll find a way to pay the bills and stuff. And like I don't feel like that's necessarily true. So talk me and Zach Herberholz did a talk together, Workbench Cotton. The first one's called F the Formula, and then the last the last one that we did was called You're Doing It Wrong, and Yoro was spelt Y O U R. I thought it was clever. There's a lot of people who's like, you know that spell wrong. I was like, yeah, that's, that's the point. That's what makes it funny. The whole kind of summary of our talk was like, don't do stuff for the algorithm. Don't like try and like maximize your content and your views and stuff. Like kind of do stuff for the love of the game and, and for the art of it. And I don't know, don't lose sight of that. So that's, that's I guess what I'm getting at is like when you try to go full time the business aspect of it can overtake the art aspect of it, which is fine for some people, but I feel like most people get into woodworking not for the business of it, but because they enjoy doing it. So going full-time is great, but don't lose sight of why you started woodworking, you started making stuff in the first place. I feel like that kind of wraps up the rambling. <laughs> so this is a hundred percent geographically accurate oriented along East line and spaced correctly scaled for Google Maps, Nantucket, Martin's Vineyard are exactly where they should be, mathematically accurate within an eighth of an inch. 16. Due to be done mid September, so we should be moving in next month. Nobody knows yet. Don't tell anybody. This is shop number three. This is going to be my new space. I'm partnering with my buddy Cam. He's going to have his operation here, and I'm going to have half the space for my. Kind of shipping and storage and fulfillment and packing for my Adirondack tear tap that's available at jackandworks.com and my merch. So we got it all planned out for a staircase to go up there, a little mezzanine, bathroom. Big uh, 5 by 10 CNC's out here, lasers over there, and then the rest of the garage bay is pretty much open. So it's kind of a manufacturing CNC space a little bit and then mostly shipping and fulfillment. It's such a hard question to answer. I feel like everything inspires me. Other people's artwork inspires me. Other people's woodworking inspires me. I don't know. I guess my motivation comes comes from just making different stuff and you know trying to be original. And that sounds so pretentious, though. Making my dad proud because he's never said he loved me. <laughs> my dad's a great guy. I don't know why I'm roasting my dad. Hey, where do you get your support from? Who <laughs> supports you? Not my dad. <laughs> my parents have been very supportive of me. They're still, they're very supportive. I feel bad. I don't know, I feel like I don't give them enough time. Same thing with my wife, I don't give her enough time. But they're very supportive of me and my endeavors in creating stuff. Uh, my old shop teacher, Mac, is incredibly supportive because I'm currently working in his barn. He lets me rent this place and fit it out. and you know, invited me to, to, to be here. Like he could have just sold this barn and made a bunch of money. Like he inherited this place from a friend of his and uh, the adjacent property, we bought the house from him. And like he, this is on the water. 
on Cape Cod. He could have just cashed out and made a bunch of money. Like, I wouldn't be here without him. Like, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel without him. He's, he barely knows YouTube exists. But by extension of everything he's taught me and letting me work in this space, that's why you get to see my videos. So thanks to him. Unless you don't like my videos, then I don't know. Curses to him, I guess. For, for more than just like, you know, blanket support from my wife. Like when she joined the Coast Guard, she financially supported us because I wasn't making any money. I was, I was losing money. I was spending money to, you know, try and make a business out of this. And if it weren't for her joining the military and stuff, I wouldn't have taken the YouTube channel full time. This like never would have happened. We, I don't know. I would have never had a shop up here in this barn. Like that kind of all starts with her joining the military and supporting us financially. Like, yeah, she does force me to move every few years, but without that support, I wouldn't be able to move a wood shop anyway, because the wood shop wouldn't exist. Just like my life. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my, my biggest accomplishments are yet to happen. Deep but true. I want to build a pallet wood strip canoe, but that's going to happen and that's going to be a big accomplishment when it happens. I feel like it's a cop-out answer saying a future project is your biggest accomplishment. Marrying my wife was my biggest accomplishment. Probably getting a Netflix show is a pretty big accomplishment, I guess. That's what people tell me. This story doesn't always get told correctly. I built a giant nutcracker as tall as me that crushes a coconut. That might be one of my favorite projects. That's probably, that's probably one of my biggest accomplishments of a project so far. Uh, just because it was it was a, a segmented wood turned project. It maxed out my lathe. It was 16 inches in diameter because that's how big my lathe is. Uh, so that's how big I made the nutcracker. And it, the head came flying off the lathe once, uh, smashed against my door. There's still a dent at, the, at that house in DC. Uh, somehow got my security deposit back 100%. Figure that one out. So I started with that vision of crushing a coconut with a giant nutcracker, and then at the end of the video, that is what happened. Posted this giant nutcracker on Reddit, and some TV producer found it, found the nutcracker, and was like, this, is, this guy's interesting, he's got something going on. Reached out to me, I almost missed the email because I get these emails every once in a while, not, not to brag or anything. But TV producers, when you have a YouTube channel, they're always trying to purge YouTubers because they're talent and they can, you know, steal their talent because they don't have talent on their own. Uh, shout out to TV producers. <laughs> so it's the same grinder you saw on Netflix carving a giant dinosaur head. So we had an hour long Skype call and she was like, yeah, I like you. Let's, let's see, let's come up with some concepts. And we emailed back and forth a couple times. She found a photo of me Jimmy, Derek, Graz, and Pat. And she's like, all right, we're gonna build a TV show around you guys. Me and Graz came up with the idea of building stuff for kids. Our original idea was Shark Tank for kids. But eventually, new showrunner comes on. He's like, hey, I got this idea. Why don't you build stuff for kids and build their crazy ideas? And I was like, yeah. So he pitched that to us and we we're like, yeah, of course we like that idea because we came up with it. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, and then that became the Netflix show. Uh, I mean, it's been a few months now. This is what my shop looks like now. So all that footage you shot like six months ago, like don't, don't use that. It doesn't look good. This looks way better. Well, yeah, so that's all my toys on the top shelf. So whenever I need to cut something, I have to come up here and grab it. Don't, don't care about the sandpaper, uh, spray, uh, <laughs> the spray paint can holder is modular, so these have French cleats to hold them together. You can add as many modules as you want, or you get rid of this top unit here and you can hang that right on the wall without the top unit. Oh, there's one behind your ear too. So this is Jimmy's old bandsaw. He has probably five of these, so he didn't even notice this was missing. Uh, this wasn't here 10 months ago, last time you shot, so use this footage now and just kind of cut it in. Just make cotton do what you work out somehow. It's a 
Let's see, I can read the sticker. American Woodworking Machinery. I'm pretending like I know what it was. It's an American Woodworking Machinery bandsaw from the 1920s. Him and Rob Rojas fixed this up. They picked this off of MySpace Marketplace and they fixed it up and now it's mine. So the, the maker community to me is probably bigger than most. And a lot of that is because my wife being in the military, we move around every few years. So where I'm physically located, I don't have a ton of friends like local to me. So a lot of my friends are on the internet and almost all of those friends are in the maker community. Like that's how through all these places that we've lived, I maintain the same group of friends because they move around with me because they're on the internet. Some people I've grown really close to, like Pat and, and all the guys on the Netflix show, but especially Pat, like physically in person meeting people from the maker community is like an extension of that. Like all these people that you meet online and then you meet them in person and it's like we're all very like-minded people. We're all very weird and awkward and on the spectrum more than likely, uh, but it jives well together. And then you meet people like Pat that you grow really close to and really respect and you jive well together with, because like you identify with another maker because you're also a maker and, and you kind of think the same way, but then, you know, digging deeper down into that, you find people like Pat that you like really meld with and like your brains just connect and, you know, where do you go from there, but best friendship. I don't know. I, I wonder if I would get the same enjoyment out of this if I didn't make videos out of it. Probably not. Cause that's like a, a lot of the fun part is making the weird projects, the making like a pair of wooden clog heelys and then showing that to people and then seeing their reaction to that. Cause like, to me, that's funny. It makes me laugh. So I know it'll make other people laugh. <laughs> From the pallet store. I have my sources I can't share. It's behind stores. You drive behind like any commercial area, they're everywhere. It's some sort of like mahogany or something. It's like an exotic, it's from Mexico, because there's a stamp on it. So, I think it's on the other, oh, there it is. So you can tell from the codes on the pallets where they came from. So that MX means Mexico, that's the country code. And HT means it's heat treated. That means there's no chemicals like fumigated inside of it to treat it. Because if you see MB on a pallet, that means methyl bromide, which means it was chemically treated and it's like super toxic chemicals. So you don't want to touch those, you want to leave those behind. Which is, I think, technically illegal now, so you don't really see those anywhere. I don't know, if they're having a bad day and they see a guy wheel across their screen in clogs that are also Heelys, like I feel like that would help. And I feel like that's something people want. Maybe it's something I want. I feel like inside I want to be happy and I can't be happy, so I try to make other people happy. <laughs> I've never photoshopped one of my photos before. I'm, frankly, I'm insulted, and I might end this interview right now. Interview right. is over. About the last question, um, and you may not have the answer for this. My accelerating path towards death. <laughs>